Hey Legionnaires and welcome back with some more Rise of Mordor action for you today and this is a glorious 3v2 siege battle on the Anunaland uh, map as you can see here and we can see that the siege towers for Dorwinian are just arriving at the walls facing the Knights of Imrahil down and I have been told uh, by the person that sent this uh, replay and that this is a super close uh, replay and is definitely worth sticking around to see how this one ends. I definitely am excited to see how this one goes. Who's shooting those guys in the back though? Oh, there's some Nimrodel Rangers. They're shooting their own men in the back. They need to be careful of that. But there is actually a uh, an artillery like volley firing here on this uh, this Imrahil Knight and they need to be careful. It's a 63%. They could just like destroy it and all these men would have been killed. They are being a bit more careful now and stacking their men up a bit. Preparing. And it looks like there are some shipmen they're going to be first to come down. So, yeah, I can't wait to see how this one goes. We have Dol Amroth and Isengard defending against Dol Amroth. Dorwinian is mentioned. And we also have uh, Gondor here. So, a lot of men factions here today fighting. And, uh, yeah, so these going to be an excellent, excellent one. Look at all these, like, Gondorians here. Ready to go into battle. It looks glorious. But, yeah, if you're enjoying seeing Rise Mordor at the moment on the channel, I would like to see some more. As I know you guys really do enjoy seeing it. Um, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe from you around here, and a comment to show you support. Uh, the support's always appreciated, guys, and I can't thank you guys enough as we worked. We're going towards, like, 3,100 subs at the moment. We're nearly there, so I just can't thank you guys enough. And it's a Gondorian sword infantry, and it's been absolutely battered by uh, archers and stuff. I don't know what by. Got hit all the way back here by something. It looks like maybe enemy artillery. Um, but yeah, that, that unit's been battered up. And they have destroyed a wall here. I presume this is Gondor's artillery. And now they're sending forward some Gondor sword infantry. And they're going to try and rush through here. But, I mean, looks like they've got some uh, some spears of Dol Amroth ready. They're going to be stopping these guys. See what infantry here. Looking like they're ready. Can't wait to see them in action. And, uh, yeah, over on the other side, I mean, Dol Amroth here, the attacking Dol Amroth, has got a pretty rough assault. This is uh, Isengard's defense here. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of Orokai infantry on the wall here. Ready to stop any... Uh, landing, so we've got some seaward infantry that will be landing first, and there's also a nice little, this is a really nice little choke point you can fight and hold here, and you can see these big units of the pikes here, 180 men, they're stretched out, and they're just like got their pikes here, supported with the swords, and they're going to be really hard to break through this pike line, look at that, look at that unit, the centurion, like, I call him a centurion, because he does look like one, doesn't he, with like the, his like uh, helmet, um, but the Urukai like officer there looking very like a centurion and they've got another line just like it just behind as well So pikes and uh, swords gonna hold for a long time forward. and crossbows and the gates have been destroyed um, So that's good Gondor looks like he's finally destroyed the gates and they can rush through there But I mean they'll be met again by pikes and uh, some Dol Amroth troops here as well So they've got a bit of a, a struggle there some Haven Guard getting focused down by from the defenders these units That's a really expensive unit can't afford of this being wasted 126 men, that's down to, you can see here, I think they're getting bombarded by artillery, and probably by archers, uh, maybe the, uh, like, the Javis as well from the Vinter Court Swords, I'm not really sure, oh, it might also be, oh no, Knights of Imperial here getting absolutely wiped out as well, not wiped out, but lost a lot of men, lost about 50 men to this, uh, to the wall, you have to be careful, you do have to be careful, but yeah, look at these, they're just waiting, waiting, for the right moment to land these men. I guess they just don't want to waste these guys. These shipmen. Just against uh, Knights of Imrahil. I don't know. Got some berserkers coming up. They need to be careful that they don't get focused on either. By uh, Avari marksmen. Uh, the, uh, the people firing at them. It looks like they're maybe just waiting for Dol Amroth to get ready. To go in. I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah. It looks like they are basically ready. This is a whole. Look at like this wall. It's covered with Urux. Really, really is. But if you've got some Rise of Mordor content that you want to send in and uh, for me to feature on the channel, then the link to my Discord is down in the description. That is the best place to send replays uh, for me to then feature on the channel. So yeah, if you're a fan of Rise of Mordor and you've got the mod and you play a lot of multiplayer and you've got some really good replays that you think I would enjoy seeing and others would enjoy watching, then uh, do join the Discord in the di in the uh, description down below. But yeah, this is one full wall one full wall of uh, Urukai. That was. They're actually waiting on this final sea shower. I think they probably want to bring the yeah the Haven Guard. Do a really nice job cutting through these swords. Uh, Shock being first onto the wall would be a very very nice move there. What are they waiting on? What are they waiting on? 
They're just kind of just soaking up the fire here from the uh, defenders. Bringing more marksmen forward. Maybe they're just uh, trying to weaken the units. Shoot, certainly shooting the, like, the Haven Guard on the wall. Probably, I mean, it's not a bad use of ammo, but you'd definitely be better shooting these guys if they were, like, not on the wall. But I certainly also, if I was a defender, would not have these guys first on the wall. You want to leave Haven Guard as, like, a, a last-ditch unit to throw in. Or a support unit. But yeah, these guys are getting focused down the arrows. And certainly not the units on the back here. They're getting hit in the back and they're probably the ones dying. They're down 143 men. They need to be careful. They need to be careful. It looks like they're sending up some doorway protectors. Oh, really good shot there from the trebuchet though. Look at that. That was a really good hit. Trebuchet getting some nice hits here. And this blobbed up formation here from, uh, from Gondor. You need to be careful. Hopefully there's another shot comes off, but that trebuchet is in a really nice position. It's all the way back here, and it's uh, nearly out of ammo, actually. Don't know how many kills it's got, but it certainly needs to keep firing on that blobbed up position there. And it looks like we're going to see the first moves now. It looks like we're going to see some doorway protectors and some Vinter Court swords going in at the same time. And this is going to be the first units to charge in. Here we go. In they go, and they're going to face down some Urks uh, and, and some Seaward Spears. I wouldn't see these door winning protectors as the greatest shock infantry in the world, but they'll certainly do some good work with the sport of the swords. Certainly no match to the Haven Guard or Berserkers. Oh, it's so hard. Geek. The wall's causing angle issues. Gotta love it. The arrows coming in. Who's firing those, ar those arrows? Uh, again, oh, it's these Nimrodel Rangers back here, probably. These guys getting really nice angle. They can shoot just straight from there, and they can shoot straight onto that wall back there. They've got a nice little clean shot. Very nice, very nice. Getting some good hits. Not the greatest angles. You'd be better getting, like, arched on this wall. I don't know if, eh, yeah, so they could get arched on the wall and fire down. I know, but they are kind of threatened at the moment by the towers. But yeah, first bit of engagement over here. Good to see... Good to see uh, Dorwin is the first. They're probably who you want to send in first. They are probably the weakest of the three factions attacking. So sending these guys in first to soak up the ammo. Probably not a bad idea. Save the more elite Gondorian troops and uh, Dol Amroth troops for later. Certainly Dol Amroth over here is going to have to spend a lot of time probably focusing down uh, like the pikes. And you can see they're going in here. They're going to actually send in their, their seaward infantry. They're going to try and fight this uh, individual sword unit on their own so you see it's a little bit of a, a weak spot to get through the pikes aren't stretched out far enough there and now they're going to be though you can see the second pike unit coming in and they're going to be able to support the swords here they need to fall back and yeah there you go falling back but they've got artillery this onager here is no use firing on this wall fire the onager here force these uh these units out of this choke point the best way to do that really that would be certainly what I'd be doing. And certainly getting the archers as well. Get archers and onager. And the onager to fire. Here we go. Yeah, the onager's doing just that now. Here we go. First volley coming in. There we go. Nice hit. Going straight through the unit. Killing a couple of men here. That guy, he's not feeling so good. He's like, oh god. I should not have signed up. Why was Saruman's leaflet so tempting? What a unit we got here coming up. We've got some fishermen levy. Skirmishers, not a unit we often see, but these guys with their javies, they could do a lot of na nice work here. And yeah, they're throwing into this uh, pike unit over here. And the arrow's coming in as well. We're going to see another javy vo volley. Yeah, there you go. They're throwing their javies. Uh, they're probably taking down a few men. I doubt they're like these, uh, these javies do. I don't know. That's quite a lot of men dropping in that front line you can see. And the pike, certainly with no shield, are uh, certainly going to suffer from this Javi and Archer fire. Look at these units. Look at the, some of the men. Oh, look at the like the officer. He's just taking it. He's taking like a champ. Oh, no, there he goes. Oh, rip. It's the officer. But yeah, these units must be... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of them. 150 still left. But it's more like, like even if they don't kill the unit, there you go. Another nice uh, shot with the artillery there. Even if they don't kill the unit, they'll uh, certainly like weaken the armor. But yeah, this is certainly a long and uh, glorious siege battle. You can see how long there is left in the timer. So I definitely recommend, pause the video if you haven't already, 
got yourself some snacks and some drinks and prepare for a bloody siege. You see the units here on the walls now fighting it out. I personally think the Uruks might be able to win this first wave. Um, I don't know. Maybe not with the Haven Guard there, but certainly I think they could beat back these uh, sword, uh, these sword infantry, seaward swords, because um, well they're coming on in drips and drabs. So they have. I feel like they've got on quite nicely, quite effectively. The Uruks have been forced back. Look at that guy. He's nearly. He's floating on the edge now. There's a couple of them like that. Uh, but it's a shame they can't get any units on these walls here because if they could get units on this wall, they could get some nice crossbow shots onto uh, like the units back there. I mean, they'd be risking shooting their own men, but they could do it. The fishermen are now out of ammo, so they're gonna have to rely on the uh, archers and the uh, and the artillery. I don't know why they don't get the archers closer because um, well, the crossbows they can't fire from here. They're gonna have to come outside the walls and fire like support um, their infantry. So I just get the archers really close and fire point blank. But over on the other side, looks like Dorwinian is uh, is losing. He's been broken here. Seems that this choke point is just too goddamn deadly to break through. Look at this Dorwinian. I love the Dorwinian Protector. It may not be the greatest unit, but it's got one of the coolest swords by far and away in this game. And some of the coolest armor. Oh, look at that sword. There you go, they're breaking. Oh, the ber Berserkers, yeah, they would probably cleaned up these guys. Zerk is still pretty fresh. They only lost like 30 odd men. Could do with setting some more men up. Some more Vinter Court swords probably going to need to be sent in. I mean, these guys aren't great. They're probably. Well, they're certainly the weakest, like I said, of the swords available. They are not the greatest. But, I mean, look at their uniforms. They look really nice. They've got some better swords available. They've got oh, some better units available. They've got some spear paladins back here. This is their general unit. I don't know if they brought in the sword. Uh, the Vinter. Yeah, they have got some Vinter guards, or Vinland guards, sorry. Um, so, yeah, these guys are pretty good. They'll go quite a way. They probably could break through that choke point. Looks like they're going to start... S mm, it looks like they're going to start sending up the shipment, but they're not. They are actually dropping more door winning protection onto the wall. So, yeah, if you didn't see what I mean by their swords, look at those swords up there. Such a weird sword. It's a huge sword as well. Well, not one that crushing down on my head. I have to hope that your armor is pretty thick. In they go. These guys are probably... I don't know. They should do okay. They're actually already breaking. Look at that. Already breaking on 90 men. Getting beaten back by these Knights of Imrahil. I guess they just don't like being surrounded maybe on the wall. Some of their wavering already at 86 men. For a shock infantry, that's pretty shocking. See what I did there. Um, but yeah, they're still jumping. <laughs> they are still jumping down, the brave men. Look at them. The last few drags, they're like, yes, jump down. And surely it'll be okay up here. And then they realize how wrong they were. But uh, yeah, they, they are actually struggling. That's going to be a little bit of a tough spot to break through then. Over on this side, Gond Gondor has also landed. Uh, again, also seeming to break. Lor Warriors of Lost Notch. Not the greatest of shock infantry though. Being beaten back by Havenguard. Gondor versus uh, Dol Amroth, they're like vassal. Such a weird alliance. There you go, they're breaking. They're gone. They'll probably get chopped down as well by these uh, Haven Guard as they go by. They'll probably be gone for good. Uh, sword infantry here being broken as well. They're losing. And the pikes here, they're having a rough time. They're being focused down by all sorts. But uh, I'm sure they're, yeah, they're denying Gondor coming in. That's the main thing. They're denying Gondor coming in. I mean, they haven't got many reserves of the defenders. They've got everything at the walls. But they're winning. They are winning. Like, everything that keeps coming up these walls, they're beating back. I'm interested to see how many kills these Haven Guard are going to get. I would be surprised if they didn't get at least 300 odd kills. But yeah, as you can see over on this side, uh, these Uruks, uh, they're not looking so hot. They're still doing okay though. What are they firing? Oh, they're firing at this spot now. They kind of missed that entire formation. Uh, again, infantry loot. Actually, Haven Guard losing here. Look at that. They're doing well on the other side, but over on this side against the Uruks, they're struggling. 
The attackers are uh, Haven Guard anyway. They're firing on the uh, on the steps now. Being forced back, but yeah, Nunaland's a very much a uh, settlement that I wouldn't say it's in favour of the defenders, but you can play with un uneven numbers. You can play like a three v two or a four v three, because uh, well, it's very easy to defend. Really, you just have to defend this one wall and that wall and this choke point, and that's it. So you can play with sort of uneven numbers and. Uh, I mean, yeah, they've killed a lot of attackers. I mean, there is a lot of defenders. Those are dead. But uh, there is a lot of attackers dead as well. I mean, it can be done with smaller numbers. And here we go. Some more Vinland, uh, Vincent Court Swords coming in. I mean, this is a beat-up unit. This is not going to survive long. I like how, like, they all have, like, hoods and stuff like that. So they look like they're fee thieves. They don't look like they're normal soldiers. They don't look like they're regular soldiers. Really. They just look like they're outlaws. Who have been called up. Like, you're pretty good with a sword. Let's use you. Ammo being used up, though. Still got some ammo on their catapult. They probably want to keep that spare for when they have to get through pikes and stuff. Uh, archers over here. Gondorian archers. Don't know what they're firing at. But they can now attack here. The uh, pikes have been uh, forced back. Oh, actually, I say that. They are still in there. Just can't see the unit card. But they're out of ammo on their trebuchet. What are they sending in? They've actually sent in their own Onager crew. Onager crew versus trebuchet crew. Who wins? Probably the Onager because it has more men. The unit losing here though on the wall now. This Haven Guard is actually losing. A second wave of uh, Gondorian swords is all it required, apparently. Gondor's like such an, it's like the old, one of the oldest factions here, but it still looks really good. Like their uniform is just like so perfect. It's so like it was in the movies. And it look, it's so simple, but so effective as their uniform. Like the shields, looks really great. Looks awesome. I think the only work that he's doing to Gondor is uh, like some of their cavalry. I think their cavalry could do with being a bit more improved. Like their weakness is their shot. Gondor's is not a great shot. I think his cavalry should be a little bit better. Certainly they're swan knights. Could do with either a buff or they could do with um, like their money being reduced. Like for the money that they cost, I don't think they're great. Certainly that's just my opinion anyway. Maybe I'm just not using them correctly. Over here though, Gondor being forced back. Oh not Gondor, Dolan being forced back. You can see that the Urukai crossbows managed to get a good angle and actually are able to route these uh these swords here, so they're gone. And they are struggling still to kick the uh, Uruks, Uruks off this uh, wall. There are a lot of them. They still have a fair amount of reserves, including uh, some Knights of Immerhill all the way back here. This is a very elite cavalry unit. Brought is it a command, so uh, that's a bit of a... Not a risk, it means you can just use it more freely. Brought a general as the shock infantry. Brought a shock infantry as a general, though. That, that's probably the better way to word that. But, um, yeah, so I think, like, Dolanus is kind of waiting for his allies to break through the other side for Isengard to make a response here because Isengard can't keep four units like this forever in this choke point. Either they do and they and they lose or they stay here and they just become, like, an annoyance. Like, they are actually running out of ammo. Dolanus out of ammo. Um, he may need some, like... Avari marksmen to come around. They've got really good ammo, like ammo. They've got really good uh, uh, archers. But screw talking about that. There's carries sallied out. We've got uh, some knights and silver swan have sallied out. I don't know where they sallied out. Maybe the gate. They must have sallied out the gate. I think. And yeah, they are now being pinned down by paladins, the winter guard, and all sorts. They're going after all these archers. They got a fair few of these gondor archers, but some of them are out of ammo already. Um, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, that, that carry Sally was uh, was risky. And it's not paid off. Whether that carry would have been better used on the defensive, I do not know. But yeah, look at that unit. It's so heavily armoured. And I think for the money that it's worth, you just don't get um, like a good results with it. Then again, I may just be 
using it wrong, or maybe you just expected to use his cavalry against running down orcs. But even still, I feel like the money, like I said, is not worth it for the unit. There's certainly a lot of cavalry units that now surpass it that are possibly cheaper. Enemy forces have destroyed an entire unit. Um, a few come to mind. But yeah, these pikes are nearly gone. And then they'll be able to break through here. I presume Isengard's brought all the pikes because all Dolamroth can bring is Prince's Coast Guard and they're not great. There's a pole arm unit. It's not the best. But it... It would do in another, in other scenarios, uh, like certainly against like orcs and stuff. Probably would do okay. Actually, I, I say that certainly maybe not against the orcs because the orcs have pretty good pikes and pole arms. Certainly do now with all the updates they've been getting. You see the shipmen over here fighting on the wall. I just wouldn't have brought shipmen. They've they've got javies, yeah, but I think now Vintercourt swords do as well. So I'd rather just bring them. I think shipmen just aren't worth the money. Okay to bring maybe as a defender if you're gonna like use it as like a throwaway unit, maybe just hold a like a choke point, but they've not really got many good assets. But they seem to be holding okay. I mean these are weakened uh Imrahil knights. They're losing here though. That's Vinter Court Swords actually. Or uh, these uh Berserkers staying out of uh out of Archer Fire. Cause as you can see, if they take one hit, they're going down. They're just, their armor is merely on their hands. That is it. And they've sent in their Avari marksman now. That's a bit of a, I wouldn't say a sign of desperation, but, oh, that's risky. Oh, dear. Just, yeah, a lot of hits there on uh, hitting friendly units. That capital is, uh, does not mind if it kills the Avari marksman as well as the uh, Dolomorph knights. And I've been told that these guys are the, are the, uh, like, elves that just don't return to Valinor. Um... Like when everyone else does. I'm pretty sure that's what they are. I'm that's what I've been told in the comments when they like previous videos. So they're pretty cool. I do love this unit. It's certainly a really nice asset for Dorwinian to have. Like some really nice archers. And these Avari marksmen can rack up kills. They really can. Very, very good unit. And they're they're nearly gone though. They're nearly gone. I don't know what these guys they're throwing their javies for some reason just at this supply barrel here. Such a waste. Hold your fire. I mean, they nearly broke through this choke point, but I mean, at the same time, this choke point has seen the doom of at least two or three units of Dorwinian. Like, there's still like a tiny unit of Spearward infantry. Uruks is still here. Still got the Haven Guard as well. Yeah, they, they're all the original units fighting there. Now see that they're uh, facing. What is going on here? They got their capital to point blank range. I presume. Ah, I know what they were trying to do. They're trying to push the capital through to break the pike formation. And they've now sent the Tarnosi marksman forward. And they're going to face these uh, Uruk swords. I mean, the Uruk swords will easily clean these guys up. Tarnosi marksman and Nimrodel range is not really that impressive uh, an opponent. Oh my gosh, look at this. When they break off the walls, it's just a, it's just a pike unit waiting for them. A rough, rough show um, like over here for Dol Amroth. Having a really rough time. You may find it might be a better interest to transfer some units. Maybe uh, back this way. Help his uh, Gondor and Dorwinian allies. Dorwinian does... Oh my god, yeah. Gondor has got far too many men on this wall though. Look at this blob. If they had some archers, uh, the defenders, they could just rack up the kills. They actually do. So Nimrodel Rangers. Get these guys on this wall here and they could fire across and hit all of these Gondorians. They're being held back by... Are they being held back by one Haven Guard? No, three Haven Guard. Wow. Okay, here's one of them. Look at him. Look at these madmen. They're still getting kills as well. Still getting kills. Haven Guard just don't give up, man. There's another one getting a kill. Oh, they could take them all down by the looks of it. The other three amigos. Oh, no, the other two amigos. And there you go. I think they're going to... Oh, no. They all died. This Haven Guard unit died to the last man. And the Gondorians are cheering now. They're like, yes, we killed them all. Those traitors. How dare they fight with Isengard. 
Got a big old blob of stuff up here. And again, Knight of Imrahil holding back a huge blob of Gondorians. Gondor does not need to like send up all these troops. A, he's just tiring these guys all out. Uh, having them all fight. And also, he's just making himself a big old target for archers. Luckily for him, I think, uh, the defenders are basically out of archers. It's just this Nimrodel Ranger back here that's got some ammo. But in another game, he could get punished for that. Blobbing up all his troops there. Over on this side, still fighting on this wall. The defenders having a lot of success fighting on this wall at the moment, or like on all the walls. I've never really seen this. Most time, most of the time I play like Rise of Mordor, people don't defend the walls and rather defend like the bottom of the wall. But maybe it's worth a try. Maybe on a Nunaland. Land, certainly I guess on this wall, on this one, a Nunaland, Land, people do defend this wall. But like the other wall over there, it just usually gets abandoned. But it might be worth trying to defend. Seems like it's a pretty good defensive position. Our men run from the enemy. But uh, yeah, it seems like Dolanos is really struggling to get through. Which is a shame because like, well not a shame, but it's a surprise because Dolanos is probably one of the most um, well all-rounded factions that could probably get itself out of this situation. It's not got, it's got a pretty good balance of everything. That's why you see it played so often on both attacker and defender today. The pikes here, though, they'll take as many of these archers and fishermen down as they want. These fishermen are just like, can we just go back to our boats now? We've got no more javis. There's no more purpose to us. They've probably got a decent amount of kills, though. I wouldn't be surprised. They are losing, though. I don't. I am surprised that they didn't bring any pikes or anything of their own. Like, I mean, Gondor's got some. He got some. Um, where are they? They are actually in the front line now, the Fountain Guard. I did spy these guys earlier, so they have got some a really elite pikes. And Fountain Guard can clean up uh, Urukai pikes. And they should. Um, whether they should have brought them around here, though, this would have been where I'd probably be thinking about bringing them. Got more Urukai infantry now being sent out. Look like they're going to send them back down to uh, the main citadel. Look like they are needing a few more troops down there. May need these pikes down there as well. Might need the uh, general, yeah, why and Stormer. This is a shameful but, uh... It looks like they're gonna have to re rely on, like... I don't know. I say, like, I was about to say they could have to rely on breaking through here, but then they still face a pike. They may have to break through one of these choke points here, might the, the um... Might the attackers. And then they'll uh, have to bring more troops back from this little uh, citadel up here. Bring them back to the main cap point. And that will allow Dol Amr Dol through. But it's it's hard to say. It's really I'm finely paused. Ready. And they've got cavalry charging in now. That's how desperate the uh, attacks are getting. What are they sending in? They're sending in uh, their, like, paladins. This is uh, a really elite cavalry unit. Paladins of the Vinter Court. I keep them outside the fort. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. But they're going to... Looks like they're going to try and pull them through, which is a big no-no. You shouldn't try and pull units through. And you'll lose a lot of men for it. See, so Vary Marksman in here. But they are going to try and they are going to try and do that. Yeah, you can see. Look at this. Here you go. Pulling through. That's, you shouldn't really do that as a as a player. Like, Dorwinian should not be going to pull through. They were going to break through that line anyway. There's not many of them left. All they had to do was send in a few more troops. He's got some Vinland guards here. Send them in. They would have done the job. But yeah, he's pulled his cavalry through. Didn't lose too many either for it. That's just really unlucky for the defenders on their part. We're about to see like the reserves, like Uruk swords here. They're going to get charged down with these paladins. They're going to try and... Oh, maybe not. No, here they come. Here they come, surely. No, nope, they changed their mind. Wow. I'm surprised. That would have been a fresh unit. Could have just charged down and killed. And here you go. Luckily, they're going to get probably pinned down by some more uh, Knights of the Silver Swan. And... Knights at Imra Hills. Good to see that they are going to get punished for pulling through. They're going to at least lose this cavalry. It's a very little gain. Knights at Imra should clean these, uh, this Vinter Court cavalry up. Are they going to get the swords involved? No, not really. The swords need to be desperately sent over here, it would seem. All they need is a fresh shock unit in here. 
All they need, like a fresh shock infantry. I think the attackers brought too much cavalry. Like they've got Gondor cavalry here, Knights of Silver Swan. Um, the cavalry over here that's been like Paladins of the Winter Court, they've been sent in. Got more cavalry here. I know obviously like you could sally, but I feel like they could have brought, it's a 3v2. So I didn't, I would have felt like as an attacker myself, the defenders can't afford really to sally too much. Like they sent out one cavalry unit. So you don't need like as many cavalry units as they have. Um, so I feel like they could have, uh, they could have probably brought like less expensive cavalry, certainly like Dorwinian. Could have brought the Winter Court cavalry instead of the Paladins of the Winter Court. I forgot what they're called. They're like the sword. They're basically the sword variant, or the cavalry variant of the swords. Um, but yeah, I feel like they definitely could have brought less cavalry because in a three v two, defenders can't usually afford to sally out because they can't afford to lose too many units. It's a bit dark here. I do apologize, but Gondor is actually uh, setting up the pikes. I don't know if they're winning. His found guard have lost a fair few men, but nothing too much. The pike's nearly dead here, though, so they, they should win eventually. This gate here, this is unfortunate. They've got to keep a pike unit just entirely in that gate there. Those uh, those Vinter Vinland guard here, they're pretty damn good. They should rip through most of these guys. They have the beating of most of the, like, Golanos basic infantry, like his seaward spears and infantry. And most of his elite infantry, like, Dolanos already used up. This is like one of his last few fresh units. And it's a spear infantry unit. Surprisingly. What's he got back here? Berserkers. Yeah, there you go. So basically, yeah, most of his fresh units left is just his cavalry and that spear unit. Dolanos kind of all spent. He's on the walls fighting it out now with his uh, Haven Guard and his Knights of Imrahil. We're now facing more of uh, Vinland Guards. I hate that, like, Dorwinians, both their units, both their sword units, both begin with a V. So I have to think, like, twice before I say one. Like, is it the Vinters or is it the Vinland? And in this case, it's the Vinland Guard. They just love their wine in this part of the world. But, I mean, yeah, these guys have not really got anywhere to go. I don't know why. Are they setting up more? Please tell me they're not setting up more guys onto this. No, the Spear Paladins are going somewhere. I would have just kept them kept them here, popping uh, abilities and stuff. They're bringing around the archers, though. This is smart. Gondor needs to bring around his archers. If they can break through here with the archers, then, I mean, Dol Amroth here has got a lot of infantry, like a lot of fresh infantry. He's been fighting on this wall a long time. And he's still not had any success. Still fighting on. These Haven Guard have been here for the entire thing. Uruks won't give up though. They will not give up. They're exhausted. Eager. Casually sustained though. They're eager though. That's the thing. They're just like, yes, there's more man flesh to kill. Meat's back on the menu, boys. Certainly will be if they can kill all these, uh, kill all these uh, men of Dol Amroth and win the battle. There will be plenty of man flesh. Even some elven flesh in the case of the Ivari marksman. Setting up more swords though. Requires another sword infantry, Dol Amroth believes. Still trying to break through here. My god, they need some pikes or something. Those berserkers, I don't know if they're in there. They're not, but I don't know. No, they're not. They may all be dead. But the Uruk and Dol Amroth combination here is working really nicely. I mean, they are also facing one of the, probably the weaker factions in the mod, being Dorwinian. 
don't really know where their strengths are. Maybe they're, maybe they're archers with the Avari Marksman. That's probably their strength, but it's not a great strength. And it's pretty, I mean, Avari Marksman would probably get bested by most of the Elven factions. Maybe it's just they're a cheap, just a cheap, uh, you, like, faction. Maybe that's their strength. Not really sure. Don't know why they still haven't pushed through here. There's barely any pikes and spears left. Just push the pikes in and you, you break through. What have they got here? All archers. Nothing to worry about. All the berserkers on the wall here. Yeah, these berserkers, I'm sure they're ripping to shreds units. And they're fighting these Gondor swords in the back. Gondor's actually now squished between Dol Amroth and uh, an Isengard. And he might die here. There's like three units on this wall who might die. It is seriously close now as well in numbers. Like they were outnumbered with the defenders. About 1,700 men. They brought it down to a 500 man difference. And they are still struggling. Are the, uh, are the attackers. But now with the archers here. Gondor's brought his archers here. There is hope. There is hope. They just need to break one of these pike units. Just focus one of them down and they can get through. Easily. Finally those fishermen can go home. They're like, oh thank god. Today's catch will be in. Keep at them. Do not help the wounded yet. I like how they have barbarian like voices and stuff like that. <laughs> like that's very urk. Yeah, they're not really getting shot too much yet. I'm not seeing many men drop. We need the occasional arrow coming in. What a line that is. It looks awesome. It really does. Oh, there you go. Starting to drop now a bit. Uh, men breaking. Oh, they got some swords breaking this. Um, Seawall breaking. My want to those crossbows over the f like over here. Like They could do with maybe some crossbows just to scare some of these units off. Suddenly get rid of those pikes. Need some archers for those pikes. They're sending more swords here. What we've got Vinland guards going onto the wall. I mean, now would be the time. They're sending them up the wrong tower. They need to flank the, uh, the, knight, the uh, Knights of Emmer Hill. Surround them. They are really desperate to get in here now. Gondor Sword Infantry over here as well. I don't know. It's a rough one. Like the bodies piling up in this choke point must be insane. Really must be. Kind of want to keep an eye on here though. See if they're going to... I mean even if they uh, like break the these two. There is another pike unit still to like kill off. So you're going to have to save their ammo for that as well. Though they have given up defending the bottom of this uh, these steps. So that's a plus. They've got a tiny unit off the wall. There you go. So there's some success with Dolanroth. They have men inside the Citadel. Not for long though. I imagine these pikes will uh, mop them up. Oh, and the crossbows. I hope the crossbows don't use waste any ammo on these guys. They are not worthy. It's a tiny li little unit. Just charge them. Oh, they are. They're going to shoot them, aren't they? Yeah, they shot at them. For sure. Yeah, no point. No point. Waste. Don't waste your ammo. If I execute this... Yeah, I just shot that... Oh my gosh, that poor unit. Look at them. That's all that's left. Look at this guy. What's he doing? What's he doing? Take a, just a jab at him. No, they shouldn't have wasted their ammo. Should not waste their ammo. They're now back in this choke point over here, though, are the Fountain Guard. And they are winning decisively. It's what we like to see. So yeah, this is where they uh, they need to get through. They need to excel here to the uh, Gondorians. They need to break through here. And then once they break through one of these choke points, they can then get cavalry inside, get all that cavalry. And they can start to open up other choke points. Yeah, 
Yeah, these are good. I love watching and just looking at like the uh, Fountain Guard. They are such a cool unit. Sure, you don't see more of them in the trilogy. Cavalry coming over. We've got a nice little swan coming. Over. I don't know what they're what they're thinking. Are they going to dismount them? Please do not dismount these guys. If he dismounts them, I'll be very upset. All he has to do is just be patient. He's going to break through this this choke point here. And they are winning in this spot here, though. Swords are beating these uh, spears here. And there's so few swords. Condor Sword Infantry mopping up these uh, these spears here, apparently. Just get the uh, Darwinian Spear Paladins in and they'll be fine. Oh, Gondor, don't pull through. Please, please. What is sitting up now? Oh, a full unit of Uruk-hai Infantry. Okay, they're not breaking through anytime soon. And certainly Gondor should not pull his cavalry through now. But he's going to, isn't he? He is going to. He shouldn't pull it through because there's spears here to start with. Also, it's just damn right cheating. Get the cavalry out of there. Get it out of here. Yeah. Smart man. Get it out. Just let the swords do their bit. All they have to do... They could even just pull back and just let the pikes here. They're going to win on their, spot, on their spot. They are apparently being tacked in the rear. Not quite sure by what. I mean, now if they felt daring enough, the like defenders could send out their cavalry and they could try and take out this cavalry. I mean, it's Gondor, saw, uh, Gondor cavalry and uh, Knights of the Silver Swan. They might be able to start, like, beat them both. This is Knights of the Emerald Hill and Knights of the Silver Swan. Could possibly beat them. Obviously, there is the risk that uh, they will bring around their cavalry with uh, Dol Amroth. But it's worth a try. They've got more, like, Wyand Stormers in this choke point. They're wasting all their ammo. And they shouldn't be doing this. Just not stack up their Gondor or Arch. So they just have one behind the other. Because you can see they're being obstructed. So they're not firing effectively. And there's no reason to have them like this. Because there's no Archers here. They also shouldn't have this like, them like this anyway. If there's Archers. Making a very big target. But yeah, just have the units like one in front of the other. They'll fire over each other. And they'll hit the uh, pikes. Yeah, these big shields of the Wyand Storm is trying to protect the pikes. They They're probably slowing down the, uh, like, the kill rate of the archers. They certainly were killing a lot of these guys. They're down to 72. They're having a really rough time with the attackers trying to find a way through. I'm trying to think what I would do differently in this. In their, I mean, this is definitely a point where they can break through. If they can kill this Knight of Imrahil, then they're off the wall. Like, at the same time, all they have to do is fight this uh, dismount. Like, they don't even need to fight this unit now with this Vinland Guard. Let the spear hold it in place. This Vinland Guard could get off the wall just here. And then it could get in behind. I mean, the risk is, though, they have cavalry. So if anything gets off the wall, this is the problem. If anything gets off the wall for the attackers, it's getting run down by Imladris Cavalry. Imladris Cavalry. Um, I've probably been saying that all game, haven't I? I bet. Um... It gets run down by Dol Amroth Cavalry. I bet I've been saying Knights of Imladris the entire time instead of Knights of Imrahil. If not, then I'll be very impressed. Both being with IM is just a mess. Oh, they have actually sighed out. There you go. I was correct. They've sighed out with their cavalry. Knights of the Silver Swan have sighed out. And they're rear-charging the Gondor Swords there. They need to deal with this. Where is the general? There he is. Knights of the Silver Swan. Yeah, he's going to get rear-charged again. Why are they sending their Gondor Cavalry through the choke points? Such a bizarre thing. Um, really no need. And there you go. Yeah, they're going to just charge them into the back. That is a risk, though. Now they're, like, getting intermingled. They're pulling through their own unit. Yeah, that was a bit risky. They should have uh, probably been a little bit more careful with that. But, yeah, you can see the general's now coming up. He's going to miss them. He needs to be careful. Yeah, you see he's got the attack to go after the uh, unit of cavalry. And it's going to carry on. And he's going to pull, and he's going to pull through the unit accidentally. This will be more of an accent one because the unit you can see is still trying to go after the uh, Swan Knights. Because it's like so much of the units just there, stuck on the wall. They're just trying to find the closest way to get to the uh, to get to that other Swan Knight. But they're going to get cut down now with the spears. That's a real shame because the general. Oh no, finally he's realised. Took him. He only lost a few men, but still. They are winning now on this wall here. Are winning now on this wall here. Did they pull their other cavalry back? They did. I don't know why they keep sending their cavalry into the back of their own units. Just break up their own formations. Oh, they've nearly killed the pike unit. Wow. Um, well, well done. Um, there are more tour there are more pikes though. It's the issue. 
And they might kill everything on this wall here as well with Dol Amroth in time. Again, though, I don't know why he doesn't now just send, like, a, a sword unit and go... Can he not get off the wall? Yeah, he could get off the wall all the way over here by this spot. So that's what he needs to do. Is just not attack down here because... That's one way off. There's a second way off. And there's only one pike unit. So... He just has to stretch them like that. He just needs to play smart. I know it's not... It's a very simple thing, but you don't think about it sometimes when you're playing. I mean, now sending in a Haven Guard... This is kind of a sign of desperation a bit, I feel. But they're actually losing at the pikes. They're falling back. They only lost two men. They were breaking these pikes. They could do with just firing some fire ammo at them, possibly break these units. I don't know. I do not know. There you go. Now you can see the spears are going to try and go off this wall. And I bet they're going to get met with cavalry. Yeah, you can see there's already Knights of Silver Swan getting ready. If this spear unit gets off the wall before it can form up, they'll be charged by cavalry. Well, that's what the defenders should do. The men have thrown down their weapons and are fleeing. This is the perfect unit you want to get off the wall first. So they've finally done it. It's taken them a good long time, though, of the siege. And this unit is the general unit. So that shows how much of the army's been sacrificed. And now they're going to try and flank this unit here. I would not do this. I would not do this. If this unit can form square, it needs to form square. And then just stand behind this this uh, this formation here. Because it's going to go and rear charge these guys now. And then they're going to get rear charged by cavalry. So they're playing into the defender's hand by doing this. Because now you'll see they're moving forward. Are the Knights of the Silver Swan... And here they come. Yeah, the Spears are actually turned in time. Even still, though, they're not quite formed up. And there you go. The Spear unit gets flattened. And that's lost a lot of men. Yeah, that's just gone down a ridiculous amount. They need to form square or something. Form square, the cavalry won't charge them. And the infantry will have a hard time breaking through them. That's what they have to do. And they've de defeated Gondor up here on this wall. Uh, Gondor is still winning in this choke point here with his found guard, but he's losing a lot of men. There's uh, one or two pikes left for the Uruks. But there's literally nothing. Uh, I mean, there is cavalry that obviously could come through that gate. But there is uh, very little infantry or anything that can now stop um, that can come through this gate. So, I mean, they could pull back their pikes. They're constantly cycle charging with their uh, nice silver swan right now into the back of these uh, spear paladins. And they're going to lose because of it. Being cycle charged. And this is a painful way to go. A painful way to see an elite unit get killed. And there you go. Nice charge again. A real shame. How's it going on the other side? Still not breaking through here. There's still a fair amount of time in this game though. That's the thing. They've nearly broken this spear unit. I wonder if... Yeah, they're going to try and charge this Imrahil Knight forward. I wonder if they're going to see if they can break through here. There's very few pikes. So maybe they're thinking, we charge through. I mean, there's a, it's literally, well, look at that. It's like one line of pikes. I think they're going to try and force their way through. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't... I say that's a pull through, but it's, it's, it's it, it was a very thin line, and there were gaps in the line. It's not like it's pulling through a full formation. And so there you go. The Knights of Imrahil are in behind. They're able to go after crossbows. Able to go after... Um, this whole line if they want to. And this could undo the defense here. They're going to go after these crossbows. Run them down. Allies have lost the general. Um, I presume. Yeah, that's going to be the uh, spear paladins. So that'll be Dorwinny now. I think Dorwinny already basically was out though. Yeah. So the spear paladins are gone. And now this whole choke point's freed up. And they can get their cavalry out and do, start to do stuff. They're actually going to be aggressive with their cavalry. And it could get caught out here. Silver Swan versus Silver Swan. He needs to start running if he wants to do anything about that. Nice Amor Hill over here having a very nice time though, running down just about everything. You can see infantry now going forward. We've got shock infantry in here. Trying to do their best. Units already wavering. Units losing. So here we go. We may see, even though some of their allies are gone. Dolan may be eventually be able, to be able to break through this choke point and turn the battle in favour of the attackers. 
That one was kind of a pull through. I think the unit was, I mean, some of the units certainly pulled through, but I think it's trying to go around here. Um, so it's kind of a half a pull through, half a knot, really. Like, that's just pathfinding with, uh, with just total war. You should really have taken it out and then gone in. He's just going to rear charge them. That's all he's going to do differently. Where's the Imrahil Knights? They're still here. They're actually dead already. This is a pretty fresh unit. It's getting... Chopping down this uh, infantry. It needs to go after all this uh, shock and stuff that's now coming up here. See the Haven Guard are about to face that as well. They're flooding an infantry here. Don't know why Isengard's not responded to this. Sent like maybe the pikes from the uh, Citadel out. I do not know. Oh, that carry though just got gunned down in the rear by a final volley from the crossbows. Good thing this wasn't the general. And here we go. Four, bro four brave horsemen. Yeah, it didn't, didn't make a single impact. Now shock infantry and swords mop these guys up. Oh, simultaneously dying. There you go. And the last guy, look at him, brave man. Keep going. We name you Derek. Derek will live a long and prosperous life. They still have a bit of ammo to Gondor as well. What are they firing at now? Berserkers, a fresh Berserker unit as well. Jeez. They still got a few little uh, tricks up the sleeve of the defenders. These Haven Guards chopped down these uh, crossbowmen like they were never there. There you go. Finished. Now they're getting recharged by Berserkers. Haven Guard versus Berserkers will be an interesting matchup. Be interested to see who wins this one. Over here looks like Knights of Imrahil. The Gondor Archers are losing. Knights of Imrahil, I'm not so sure. They're doing okay. Holding the line. I think they're trying to break through here. They're certainly flanking these pikes here. If they kill Isengard's general, then, I mean, Isengard's most of the, got most of the forces left. He may chain route. He may chain route. I mean, they've got still a lot over here just guarding, uh, sc scaring that cavalry off. I don't know where it's even gone. Well, they brought it all around here. They need to move everything from over here to the top now to face, like, what is left of the uh, attackers. But it is super close. I mean, there's 200 men in it. The attackers are still the ones with the numbers, but barely... Barely. The defenders still have a lot of pikes. The cavalry is just kind of like trying to pull through there. I don't know if like it should. There you go. Cavalry pulling through. Probably shouldn't be. It's not knocked down that entire unit at all. It's using a lot of men for it. Foolish move. I mean, they've got stakes here ready as well. Need to be careful. They can't carry on that way. I mean, they, all they need to do anyway is just route all this. This is just all they have to do now. They just rear charge, yeah. They pulled through something that they probably shouldn't have, the Gondor or Cavalry. And they're now just going to rear charge it. Feel like they should have uh, not pulled through that. Ah, well. Can't do much about it now. Now you can see the Berserk is getting crushed between Cavalry and Shock and uh, Knights of Imrahil. It's a bad way to go. Nice of him are losing though. Shows how good these guys are. To take out our him. This is the general unit here for uh, for Dol Amaroth. He's facing down the Wyan Stormers, which is the general for Isengard. And he's going to actually come out of that combat. And he's going to rear charge his swords here. And the pikes. If you can free up all these units, then, they've, uh, then they're well and truly through. Cavalry is charging and doing a lot of damage to these uh, Berserkers, though. Turning this fight nicely for the Knights of Imrahil. They should just stay in combat now, and they could route these final few men. Looks like they're going to fall back to the main cap point with the last few men. Probably not a bad idea, actually. I mean, going up here is kind of a lost cause. They don't even need to fight these final few units here. They could just, what they have here, push onto the cap point, and then they've, uh, like, and then cap it, and just leave these units up here. There's pikes in here, like... Why attack this? 
This isn't a cap point at all. The, they, the defenders can keep this. All the attackers have to do. I mean, kill Isengard's general and you probably... Not won the game, but... There you go, he's dead. Uh, I mean... Uh, Dolomroth still has his general, his Knights of Imrahil, but... Dolomroth's only got about one new unit of infantry and some archers left. Isengard's got most of the infantry, so it'll be weaker now because it's lost its general. Weaker on morale anyway. Berserkers fight to the last man, so they're... They'll be, they'll be fine. But also, these berserk, these uh, Uruk pikes, they're kind of in the risk. Yeah, they're gonna have to fall back to in here if they're gonna not want to get flanked. And now I'd certainly not bother attacking them. Like this is just not a point that you need to take. Yeah, you can take it. There's a point here. It's not the main cap point though. They might as well just get the rest of their cavalry in and uh, like run down stuff. Looks like they're gonna send all their cavalry. All the way back ground and just go through these points here that have no stakes. Even though they're a, the attackers could just destroy the stakes. It shouldn't take them too long. They've really staked up this area though. Look at this. Insane. So many stakes and caltrops. But yeah, I'm just going to fast forward now because, uh, well, we're just waiting on the attackers to basically get to the cap point. That's basically all they're going to do. And they're going to assault these last few men here. What have we got? Knights of Amor Hill, Nimidal Rangers... Seaward spears, some pikes. Yeah, not much left. Not much left really at all. But these are the brave defenders that have got to hold the cap point. They fought hard. I mean, for a 3v2, the defenders have done a really good job. Like, a seriously good job. Um, looks like they're destroying stuff. Uh, I don't know. Are they destroying these things? They should be. If they want to get through, they just need to destroy these things. And uh, it allows their cavalry to get in. Run down some of these swords. Oh, those brave swords making a making a dash for the final cap point. Yeah, they weren't making it. But yeah, this is all we just gotta wait for. It's just the last dregs of the uh, of the defenders to get back to the cap point and also the attackers just to break through all these stones and stuff here. And these stakes. And then they're good to go. One more. Got one more. There you go. There you go. I mean, is there a way down here? There is actually a way down here. Why are the cavalry just not going all the way around here? Would it be far simpler? Um, and they could actually cap this point here then. That would lower morale. And they can't defend every point, like every way in. I mean, they're going to try. Best way just to attack is to attack here. And the Nimrodel Rangers. They need to keep what strength they can for the general as well. They need to break that general. Pin down. Here they come. Here come the attackers. The final few men. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. It certainly has been a very, very fun one. I have, uh... I've certainly fully enjoyed it. It's certainly been a really close one as well. Like, I mean, really strange tactics to defend the walls. Like, actually on the walls. Instead of just at the bottom. Which is often what you see in Rise of Mordor, certainly, at the moment. Um, but yeah, it certainly worked. I mean, for a 3v2, yeah, it certainly worked. I mean, they've limited, um, like, what the attackers can do. I just hold them at these walls and that choke point for a really long time. And like the uh, Uruk Pikes may not have got many kills, but they'll certainly have annoyed the attacks for such a long time. But here we go. Looks like the, uh, we'll just go to normal speed now. Looks like the uh, attackers are coming in. They've got a fair few units that are still pretty healthy. These uh, Knights of Imrahil are pretty fresh in numbers and in... Mer well, some of them is very fresh in numbers. And they're all fresh in, like, uh, energy and stuff like that. I just send, like, a tiny unit of, like, go and capture these points. It's actually quite a lot of little points that you need to capture on this one. There's one, two, three, four, and the main one. Well, no, well, one, yeah, one, two, three, and then the fourth one, the main cap point. So there is quite a lot. And they're sending their general in first, our, uh, Dol Amroth. There you go, brave play. But I guess they're just wanting to get on with business. Facing down some, uh, Knights of Imrahil as well, so, I mean... And now they're gonna turn the pikes. Not a bad idea, turn the pikes around, but, I mean... Doing so, they'll probably just send some more infantry around another way. They are overstretched. Far, 
and wide. And you can see they bring around their general. They're going to try and get a sneaky kill. Knight's Aimer Hill will beat uh, Silver Swan and Gondor. And yeah, he's going to get the charge first. He's going to get a nice charge as well. Oh, yeah, nice charge. Nice charge into this. Uh, nice to Silver Swan. Needs to send in some shock infantry. Uh, yeah, he's sending back his general. Need to pin this cavalry down. Kill it quickly. Yeah, there you go. They're pulling the cavalry out, and now they're losing the fight. Losing a lot of men. Look at that. Down to 36 already. If he stayed in combat, he might be okay. But he should have also probably not been this aggressive. Should have waited until the uh, Haven Guard was much more in, like involved in the fight. They're now attacking around here. The spears, they'll hold for a little while, but I would have thought with the shock and the sword-like combination, they'll break through this, this spear line in time. The pikes are now coming up, though. Where do the pikes go? Um, like the new attack goes, yeah, you can see this general is in a real spot of bother now. Running along the graveyard. He'll soon be in this graveyard if he keeps this up. He needs to just turn and face. It's nice that Hill just is a good unit. If they can uh, get it out. Oh, the pikes are coming, though. Or, pikes are coming to, the save, to save the general. Might not be enough, though. Ten men left. He should have just stood his ground. Yeah, the, the swords and stuff were coming up, but that's the risk. I mean, really, he shouldn't have sent it in so early. He got a really good first initial charge off and then ran away. And, like, that just allows the uh, like the opposing carry just to chop you down as you run away bit by bit. And the general's going to be one of these last four. Captured the gates. Gates to capture. Oh, they captured these ones. They've finally taken the citadel. There you go. Well, I think the attackers are going to win because uh, that general is very much dead and that was their last hope. You can see they're actually in behind, capping the point. All they have to do is break through this uh, spear unit and that's kind of all they've got to do. Now they can just, yeah, they're going to rear charge these guys. These Nimrodel Rangers and the Knights of Hill, they'll die. And the general's about to die as well. I mean, they've got some more pikes coming up. But really, they just need to send some cavalry back. Like, get one of these carriers back. Go and rear charge these guys quickly. Man, the Zimmer Hill Knights. See, this is what I mean. It's a tough unit. It doesn't die easily. They're down to only three men now. Tough, tough unit. And one of them's here. It's so hard to tell from the difference between Swan Knights. He just got popped to rally, didn't he? Encourage. There you go. Breaking these guys. War cry. Yeah, and they should break eventually. And you can see that the, uh, I think army losses are starting to take hold. You can see units are starting to break. Getting rear charged of the pikes. They've broken. Very fresh pike unit gone. They're about to take the point. There will be the pikes left. But that's it, basically. This is it for the battle. I'm just going to fast forward now. Because we know who's won. It was a really close run thing. Let's see how many men were left. 900 men left. And this was pretty super close. And look at that. The Pikes is going to defend there. That's fine. Pikes can just defend here. You can see that they're just going to capture the point, And the time will just run down. These guys are just getting uh, attacked on the flank anyway. They just... Carry could just charge these guys on the flank. And would probably do okay. What were they bringing around? Some dismounted heavy... Uh, some dismounted uh, Knights of Hill. Yeah, they should just charge these guys on the side. They'll help break them. There you go. In they go. Brave, brave men. Not even men, they're Uruks. Brave, brave Uruks. And this is when they die. And there you go, a Pyrrhic victory. So uh, we'll end the replay here and have a look at the end results. So yeah, this woman was sent in by uh, Boris, who was playing as the attacking Dol Anroth army. Um, did quite well, to be fair, and had probably yeah, had the most men left. Uh, mainly because he wasn't attacking most of the battle. He was just standing and watching the pikes, which he had to do, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so uh, well done to him and to RZA and to uh, Themingen, who were playing as uh, the attackers. And uh, also well, well done to Life Alert and to Executioner, who were playing as the uh, defenders. So we'll quickly have a look at some of the results. Um, Boris's cavalry here, his Knights of Imrahil getting 200 kills. Pretty good for them. His Haven Guard here getting 224 kills. His uh, dismounted knights at Emil, 228. His cowpole getting 110 kills. His archers, 121. His uh, fisherman, nearly getting 100 kills. And his mainline sword's the best one, getting 123 kills. 
So not bad at all. And then we have Themingen here playing as uh, Gondor. Um, 157 kills with his Knights of Silver Swan. Not too bad there. His uh, Gondor swords, I mean, they just got so bunched up on the walls and murdered. Uh, best one getting 124 kills. Definitely could have done better with them. His pikes did really well, getting 172 kills. Hopefully, learns that Loz and Arch uh, shock just aren't worth bringing. They're not that great. Not getting many cool kills at all. His Gondor archers, 166 kills, so not too bad there. His cavalry getting 147 kills, and his honors, 165 kills, which is quite good for that. And then we have uh, RZA here playing as Darwinian. His archers, which he only brought two of, I'm surprised I would have brought more. 182 kills, quite good for the Avari marksman. His Darwinian catapult, 177 kills. His paladins of the Winter Court. So sad to see these guys only get 15 kills for the amount that they cost. Dorian Protectors not getting many kills either, 94. And his uh, Vinland Guard, 102, uh, 112 kills. And none of his swords did that great at all. Um, so yeah, that's unfortunate for RZA. And then we have uh, Life Alert, who's playing as the uh, Defending Dorwinian, uh, Defending Dol Amroth, sorry. Um, his Knights of Silver Spawn getting 130 kills, some of those that side out. His uh, Knights of uh, Imrahil, the Dismounted Ones, getting... 523 kills, 454 uh, kills, really, really well done. Then his uh, Haven Guard here getting 213 kills, 186. And then you have like his Trebuchet here getting 235 kills, really, really good. And his Nimrodel Rangers, 269 kills, again, really good. Then we have Ex Executioner here playing as Isengard, really good player. Playing as, uh, well, yeah, playing as Isengard. Playing um, his White Hand Storm is here getting 152 kills. His... Uh, Urukai Infantry, 168 kills, really, really good for them. Not like a, a excellent sword, but it's like pretty mid-tier sword unit. It did really well. And his Berserkers, look at these kills. 366, 128, 130. Um, yeah, doing really well, all of these kills. Um, and then his Urukai Pikes, 188 kills for some of them. I mean, some didn't get that many kills, but this one, these two did very well. And his Crossbows getting 179 and 171 kills. So yeah, there you go. Well done to the uh, defenders and congratulations to the uh, attackers for the victory. If you enjoyed, guys, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. And also don't forget to go and join my Discord and also the Rise of Mordor Discord. They're doing a lot of live streams at the moment. Um, and that, yeah, also check out their like YouTube channel, doing a lot of live streams, showing off like what's going to be coming new, like the new Dwarven units and uh, like unit cards and stuff like that. Definitely worth checking out. They've got some amazing work doing like like right now. And it's very exciting for the mod. And uh, yeah, also they, they're showing off like what is happening with the new campaign. So yeah, if you want to see what's going on with the new campaign and development of that, definitely go and check out their channel. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. And until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you in the next battle. Bye for now.